Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Move Daily Fitness. I'm Tracy Steen. All right, the workout today is going to be a low impact and VO2 max cardio HIIT workout. I'm gonna start you with that low impact cardio. We'll warm things up. We're gonna do that for about four minutes, then we're gonna move into a VO2 max where we're really trying to increase our velocity of oxygen and increase our heart rate. I'll show you some low impact modifications if you wanna keep the whole thing low impact, but try to work with a little bit more intensity during those VO2 max segments. I'll start you with a warm up and end with the cool down. No equipment is required in the workout today. If you want to try another VO2 max another time this holiday season, click or tap the card at the top of the screen and check that one out. Okay, the format is 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds in between. We'll do low impact for four minutes and then high impact or VO2 max for four minutes and alternate those two. Are you ready for a good hearty workout? Me too, let's do it. Okay, I will put high intensity intervals on the watch. Let's warm things up here. Let's squat and reach. All right, we'll just get those ligaments and joints warmed and ready to go. Should be a good sweaty session here today. Slightly regretting the long pants because I know within about 10 minutes I'll be dying, but <laughs> I'm cold right now. Take it wide and open here. Last one here, stay wide, side to side lunge. I'm gonna go down low, but you can stay up high and rock side to side. One more here. up to standing let's turn and do a little pelvic tilt drop for 10 side here in the static lunge last one and turn other side and drop Nice, holding on to something. I'm just gonna do a little leg extension here for 15 a leg. Five more, make sure that foot is flexed so you're not knocking the ground. And switch legs. Up, Ooh. a little glute burn already. Five more. And into some hip openers. Up and around. Okay, into some heel digs right here. Sweep the ground, stretching that hamstring a bit. One more here, and some calf raises up to the tiptoes. 15 here, and then we'll get going. 10 more. Very nice, okay. There's your exercise. Are you ready to do this? Here we go. Okay, low impact to start. I'm just gonna start with a squat front kick, alternating, okay? Of course, you can box or shuffle in between if you don't need the rest right off the hop. You'll need it eventually. Here we go. Drop and kick, now switch.
into jacks, low impact here. Just there, again, you're here, just getting that body warmed up still. Nothing too aggressive yet. And here. You could add some high impact here if you wish. We're not doing anything too strenuous yet, but we don't want to kick our heart rates up too high. This is still in that zone two. Okay, where you're at about a six or a seven out of 10 only. Two knees, two straight kick with a punch, alternating there. Knee, knee, kick, kick. tap. All right, we're going to do a single, single double butt kick. That's your low impact. And then we're going to kick it up to VO2. So we'll kick up the intensity next circuit. So single, single, double. Single, single, double. Side frog shuffle. If you want to stay in low impact, you're there. Okay, otherwise, take a look at the screen. I'll kick it up. Okay, frog shuffle. Here, here, here and back. Walk that out, yeah. Climb the ladder. So a nice vigorous high knee here. That's low impact if you want. I'll kick it up. Bring those knees up.
two seals, two T-Rex. Here's your low impact. Two and two. Drop low. Hop cardio kicks. There's your low impact. Okay, walk it out, you got a 30 second rest, and you're back to that low impact, so take a look. Double inhale, slow exhale, bring the heart rate down. You're back to the low impact. All right, we're gonna do a jack, skip, boom, boom. This is your chance to bring that heart rate back down to that six or seven out of 10. Rest if you need longer, okay? So your jack, jack, skip, skip. Of course, you could slow your action down and allow your heart rate to recover a bit more. I feel good here, so I'm just gonna kick it up. Very nice. Okay, going into that narrow wide squat pulse. So super low. Stay low to the ground. Here we go. Drop it here. And open, narrow, open. All right, we're holding that isometric contraction in the glutes, hamstrings, quads, which is gonna fire up the heart rate a bit. Don't hold your breath. Shake it out, Woo. quad burn. Okay, front and back kicks. Front, front, back, back. Let's go, you're here. And back, good. One, two, one, two.
Okay, two kicks, boom, boom, two frogs, boom, boom. Nice and tall, and kick, kick, frog, frog, good. Curtsy lunge hop. You could low impact with just an alternating curtsy or a reverse lunge. I'm gonna hop in between. Drop that back knee nice and low. Hinge forward. You're here and here. Stay tall in your upper body. Frog squats. Just don't want the blood to pool, so I'm just walking around a bit. Okay, drop it low. Here, modify right here. Into your basketballer to jump. You'll hit that low shuffle, low squat, shoot for low impact. Jump in here, land light. Walk that out. Split, split, squat. Low impact. It's a tap, tap squat. Uh, looking forward to the recovery. Hit this hard and drop.
walk it out. 30 second recovery. Bring the heart rate down slightly. And we're moving back into that low impact cardio. Okay, coming into that modified wacky jack. You could cross if you don't like that side oblique crunch. All right, I'm doing rapid fire. Nice and tall in the upper back. Side reach here and we crunch and crunch. Gave some good glutes. Let's go into the knee repeater. You're gonna hinge forward, nice and low. We're driving that knee. Rapid fire, I'll call half, then we'll switch. Again, isometric contraction, and we drive. It'll kick the heart rate up. Stay low. Four, three, two, one, and switch your leg. Okay, into that wide sumo squat knee turn. If you don't want to twist, feel free just to elevate those heels alternating. Otherwise, squat, twist, lunge. You're here and here. Stay low. Traveling high knee for four. So forward for four, back for four. You could stay put though, and just elbow to knee right there if you wish. Traveling, here we go. Four, three, two, one. Back for four, three, two, and one. Squat, wide stance, low squat, high reach to tiptoes. See, now my heart rate's starting to progressively overload on itself. Here we go. Each break is now important for me.
Push to those tiptoes. Okay, into your VO2 max. Power skip. You're here for low impact. Power it up. Let's go. Okay, abductor jump. Now, low impact will be here. Feel free to add some regular squats in between. I'm gonna attempt a full jump here. And click the heels, land light. Uh, hard. Into your reverse lunge hop, I'll call half on the leg. So low lunge knee drive for low impact. Okay. Hopping. Here we go. Low drive. Low. That's it. Switch legs, hiya. <sighs> Ice skater pause. All right, low impact will be here. We want to try and pause that lateral movement there. Let's go. You're here. Back is flat. Stick your chest out. Look at me. That's it. Hard, isn't it? You want to keep moving or fall quickly. The goal is to stick it, stick the landing. I'm going to give a full 45 break. If you don't need it, you can keep this going if you want. Oh. Walk it out. Okay. We're doing well. Double inhale, slow exhale. Stay with me in recovery. Back to low impact. That's what we're starting with. Okay. We're gonna do that cross and front jack. Reach up, we'll tap, up and tap. Just tapping that foot in front. You could tap it beside if you wish. Ready, let's work and tap.
is your chance to bring heart rate down a bit, right? Give me some deep breaths in through the nose. Slow down that exhale. Or just walk it out if you need a longer rest. All right, single butt kick with an overhead punch, front and overhead punch. Okay, butt kicks. And work right here and up, front and up, good. Okay, into that heel dig, front, side, front, side, overhead. Heel dig, three arms, here we go, and we're front, side, press, good. If it's too confusing, just stay there. Arms will help increase the heart rate a bit but not too dramatically like our high impact. Whoopsie, I messed up already. <laughs> I know I messed up twice, I'm sorry. Okay, wide stance. We're gonna pulse, pulse, front walk, pulse, pulse, back. All right, wide stance, plie, drop it low, and we pulse, pulse, walk, pulse, pulse, back. Good, now we're gonna do three knees, two, three and switch. And three, two, one, switch. Reach those arms up. All right, into your last VO2 max. Frog squat. This is your low impact snowboarder. Otherwise, I'm gonna squat, three hops, snowboarder there. Jump here first. All right, three hops. One, two, three, and snowboard. Three hops.
Uh, broad jump, three hops back. Giant step, three taps back for low impact. Land light, one, two, three. Split squat, tap, tap squat for low impact. Uh. All right, two more here, let's go. And drop. Okay, you've got your side lunge, drop and punch, little shuffle, lunge and punch for low impact. I'm gonna hurt the quads. Last VO2. Stay tall in that punch. Drop the back knee. Ten seconds. Then we've got our four-minute low-impact cool-down. Oh, this is burning. Uh, I had the worst form on that last one. Don't watch me. Okay, walk it out. Uh, we'll go into a nice, easy one right here to recover your heart rate. All right, front kick, overhead punch. Kick, kick. Reach, reach. Whew. Whew. Remember the heart rate climbs a quite a bit more before it comes down after an intense burst. So at the end of the burst, you might be at 150, but about 20 seconds later, you might be about 158. So you want to keep moving. So again, that blood doesn't pool. Then you bring your heart rate down nice and slow. One, two, three, elbow to knee. This is gonna be right here. Keep moving. Woo, that was a sweat session. Here we go, and one, two, three, knee. If you still got something left in ya, you can kick it up a little bit more. All right. If it's not a squat jump, it feels easy to me. <laughs> squat jumps are the things that kick it up. Good. 
we go out of front. Boom, boom, in back, open, and tap. Get a little lower. Here we go. Open. Good. Last one coming up is your duck under cross body punch. All right, so wider stance. We'll duck, punch, right to the diagonal, alternating sides. Last exercise, then join for a stretch if you can. We'll really stretch these things out here. Duck, punch, there you go. Halfway, stay with me. Almost there, folks. Doesn't it feel good now? Aren't you so thrilled that we're done? Me too. <laughs> oh, some of those were rough. 10 seconds, let's go. Three, two, one and done. You move daily. In your low impact cardio, MVO2 max, hit. Ah, good work everyone, I'm tingling. Everything's buzzing, it feels good. Enjoy for a stretch if you can. Once your heart rate's down enough, come down to the ground. If you need to just walk it out more, please pause the video, do that. Oh, buzzy buzz, I felt good. Uh, I know a lot of you have probably read or have listened to Outlive by Dr. Peter Atia his podcast, The Drive. Anyway, he, he talks a lot about VO2 max and how training that element of your cardiovascular system is really crucial. Switch. So if you haven't heard me say it before, why we do it is he says that your VO2 max number is one of the greatest predictors, if not the greatest predictor of longevity because of what you have to do to have a good number, okay? So think about this, if you've spent your whole life not doing any cardiovascular training, you haven't trained that system, let's go on to the back here, hamstring stretch, um, and you're winded just going upstairs or climbing a hill, and your lungs don't have that capacity to pump oxygen to your extremities efficiently, uh, or through your body efficiently to the cells, and you know, if, if you don't, have never trained that system, of course your VO2 max number is not going to be very good good, right? But when you train it, when you do hard things like, well, hill sprints and pushing heavy things, lifting heavy things, uh, sprint training, interval training, workouts like this, uh, climbing hills, hiking, swimming hard and fast, rowing hard and fast, like all of those things, climbing up stairs really hard and fast, like vigorously, you're going to train that system. And so if you started really early in your life, Let's let those legs fall to one side together, arms and shoulders on the ground. If you start it early in your life, then your system is going to be more adept. It's going to be more efficient at pumping oxygen through to your body, right? So that makes sense that that's gonna increase longevity because when you've done that for so long in your life, switch sides, you have an increase of healthy cells. You have an increase in mitochondria, you have you know, again, less blockage in your arteries and your veins and right, everything is less inflamed because you've been training the system. But it's never too late to start training the system and that's the thing. Uh, of course, you always wanna start off nice and slow, work your way up and inter intervals can be done, you know, at any intensity. They don't have to be done at this intensity that we did today. Well, if you're doing this with me, I'm guessing that you, you're fit because this was an advanced workout with high intensity, you know, moments. So I'm sure you've worked out before, but you know, for people who are new, let's stretch one leg and grab one knee. For people who are new, 
you can simply walk and then walk more vigorously, walk and then walk more vigorously. And those would be intervals that would begin to increase your VO2 max. Uh, I mentioned this not too long ago and I, for the life of me, need to look this guy's name up because I can never remember, but he was on a podcast with Dr. Rhonda Patrick and he has this concept that they've studied for years and years now called VILPA, Vigorous Intermittent Lifestyle Physical Activity. VILPA is what he shortens it as. And, um, uh, let's just come to a quad stretch. Anyway, it's just, you're doing things throughout your life with more vigor. You're running up the stairs, maybe not running down the stairs because you want to trip and fall. That would be bad, but running up and down the stairs or walking vigorously from your car to the store, um, doing things with more vigor. So if you're out for a walk, you're not mindless or, you know, meandering or strolling, you're Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you're getting it done. Uh, do you walk with anyone like that who walks with vigor? Uh, Denise and I, my friend, we just haul. We're just like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but when we walk with our other friend, Shannon, she's like 10 times faster than all of us. But anyway, it's, it's great because those are those little things that add up to increase your VO2 max, which is going to increase longevity because your system's going to work better. Your cardiovascular system is going to be more efficient for you. So if you don't know your VO2 max number, I mean, it can be tested. You can go out to a field and do a test. Uh, you can just Google VO2 max test uh, on a track and field, and it walks you through the protocol on how to run around the track and then test your um, heart rate. Um, but mostly it's like you can go to a university and they have machines where they hook you up. I mean, that's a little bit, I haven't even done that. I've heard it's really intense and uncomfortable though. Uh, I'd like to try it though, but yeah, there are other things like your watch has a, um, Apple watch has a little gauge that can say what your VO2 max is approximately. It's not going to be super accurate, of course, because these have a margin of error, but uh, you can Google that too. How do I find my VO2 max on my Apple watch? And then it'll, it'll walk you through that process, but it's good to know and it's good to practice and it's good to train this area. So that's why I include it. If you're like, well, I heard cardio is not good for women in menopause. Well, I don't believe that. <laughs> the thing is, is we, I think we think that sometimes because cardiovascular exercise like this increases cortisol. And that is true. It's stressful on the body. It's stressful on the heart, but it's a different cortisol release. It's different in terms of how it is integrated into the body than a stress related cortisol, than a low lying ongoing, you know, current stressful situation in your life. And if you are in one of those situations where things are really stressful, maybe you're going through a divorce or a death or a job loss or a personal mental health crisis, I would say workouts like this probably wouldn't be congruent with your improving mental health, right? Then you want to do things that are more complementary to going through a process like that. Things that are more gentle, right? More balanced, maybe more yoga, maybe more walking, maybe gentle lifting. Those types of workouts might be more beneficial in a season like that. But personally speaking, I think this is crucial. Um, I take my advice from that Dr. Rhonda Patrick, Dr. Peter Atia, who study longevity and what is beneficial in terms of training protocols and lifting weights and training your VO2 max and your cardiovascular system like your zone two, which is exactly what we did today, are what we need to do. So that's what I'm gonna do on this channel and I hope that you like it too. <laughs> Let's do it together, okay? Because then we can keep each other accountable. All right, thanks for joining. We'll see you in the next workout.